Now, I'm no expert at lino printing, but I have learned a few things lately that you might find helpful about registration or indexing. That's when you get two or more colours to line up correctly on the paper. The first thing is to make sure that your two printing blocks can both be held in the same place. I'm using little corners of plywood or you could use cardboard. It doesn't matter how you do it as long as you can put the blocks in position over and over again without them moving. The next thing is the paper. Now, you could use the same method for positioning, that's fitting it loosely into cardboard corners, but that only works for stiff paper. If you're using very thin rice paper as I am, it won't sit properly for you and your colours will end up all over the place. So you need some registration keys. You can buy them, or these are things that I drew up and then I cut out with my laser machine from thin plywood. One half of the pair is fixed to the printing bed and the other half will be fixed to the paper. I'm using three pairs here because I'm using quite big sheets of floppy paper. Now you can fit the other halves, position the paper in the right place and then tape the keys to the paper. And this will allow you to print one colour and then remove the paper and let it dry and then bring it back for the next print run confident that it's in exactly the same place as the first time. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> Keep prepping the sheets in the same way until you have enough for your whole print run. This is my first printing with these blocks so I stopped at six sheets. I found for curly light paper like this, it helps if the tape partially covers the female half, it stops the paper lifting the two halves apart. Right then, here we go. Inking up the first block. I'm still learning how to do this, but I am getting there. Positioning the block. Fitting the paper, laying down the paper on the block, covering it with felt. And taking a print. I'm using my homemade rocker press, the new giant version. <laughs> Isn't she gorgeous? I'm quite pleased with her. Not perfect, but it's so simple. Now then, remove the paper and leave it to dry and repeat. If you were doing a reduction print, you would carve away more of your printing block at this time and use that for your second colour. But I have a second block for mine. I deliberately made the two blocks the same size so I could ensure they would fit inside the same corners. And here we go, inking up the second block, putting it in position, fitting the paper. And the moment of truth. Hey, it worked, which is just as well, seeing as this is supposed to be a helpful instructional video. In fact, the lino was curly, so it didn't come out as well as it could have done. There's just so much to learn in this subject. I'll try gluing the 
Lino down to boards for the next time. If you haven't tried lino printing, I would recommend it. It's frustrating and messy and slow, but you never know quite what you're going to get till you peel back the paper. So it's quite exciting too. I've been working on this design for a couple of days. It's supposed to represent the Irish elements, water, earth, and air. I might try different colors next time, but I'm quite pleased with it. And where the lino was flat, the registration was perfect. If you do have a go with two color printing using this method, perhaps you'd like to share them on our Facebook page. I'd love to see them. And of course, these will be for sale in our online shop if you're interested.